Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of New Star Soccer 5. We have today some very serious things to talk about. Uh, I know that this video will most likely go up on April 1st. This is no April jokes, fool's joke though, whatever you call that in English. Since, uh, yeah, some serious things happened this weekend. As you might know, uh, unlike most other European leagues, I think it's basically like... Sweden, Norway, Finland, and maybe Iceland who plays, you know, from the spring to the autumn instead of autumn-spring like the big leagues. Um, yeah, some serious things happens. We had, you know, the premiere this weekend. Yeah, the first game of this season, the season of 2014. Yeah, we don't have to mix two years because we're not silly like the British or Italian or French or German. I don't know, no one's, I guess we are the silly ones who are not mixing years basically, playing the entire season in one single year, <laughs> whose idea was that? That's fucking silly! I think more European leagues should do like we do, um, and you know, I mean, wouldn't it be nice to, instead of watching English football, you know, on December 24th, you can watch English football in June? Or June or July 24th. Yeah, that would be much better. I haven't recorded in a couple of days. I feel a little bit weird in my voice. It feels like I'm struggling actually breathing and speaking at the same time. So I will see how this happens. Anyway, today this is going to be a very very serious episode. Yeah, because Swedish football is dead, more or less. A little bit at least. Yeah. Um, can't call. I mean, it has more most like you know been dead for like 15 years we haven't had a league in Champions League in like yeah 13 or 14 seasons now um, so I mean it's been dead when it comes to the actual football for a long time but when it comes to the fans we are one of the better leagues in Europe to be honest we yeah sort of yeah we, we have a lot of great fans yeah! but unfortunately a lot of not so good fans as well <coughs> because Two days ago, on Saturday, I think it was March 30th, a person got killed, basically, yeah. And I mean, if you're from some country like Ukraine or Greece or Turkey, it's like, yeah, that shit happens every weekend, sort of. <laughs> uh, but in Sweden, it was the first, I would say, murder in 12 years when it comes to a football fight. And this time, it wasn't even a guy who wanted to fight. I mean, you have the hooligans who wants to fight. Then you have the normal supporters, I guess like 98% of everyone who watches the games are actually normal normal supporters who just wants to to um, watch the game basically, yeah. <coughs> and yeah, I had, we had let's see, a, yeah, a normal supporter who, who got brutally murdered, um, hit from behind with a ball basically and then they, yeah, then they start kicking and, and beating him up basically for a couple of minutes. Yeah, and the, other ones couldn't do much because when they tried to, you know, aid the guy who was beaten up, uh, they were basically beaten as well. So, yeah, there uh, was some shit going on. And it's really, really horrible. Because um, hooligans are a problem, to be honest, yeah. Uh, if someone dies, it's obviously gone too far, especially if it's someone, you know, doesn't even want to fight, who just wants to see, watch football. Yeah. Even worse, I uh, know, it's not even worse. It doesn't matter which team it is, but. Um, yeah, the guy who got murdered, yeah, happened to 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 share for the same team as I do. You, Gordon, yeah. So he was away in in Helsingborg, in southern parts of Sweden, to watch the premiere, and gets beaten up until he dies before the game even starts. Um, so that's horrible, yeah. And yeah, they ha basically had to to cancel the game and all that. They they play for 40 minutes, and then a rumor started spreading among the Eurogarden fans that, you know, he he had died, that he someone has basically murdered him. Um so yeah, they, they basically they basically ran into the pitch and you know demanded that the game would be stopped, basically. Because if if not the situation would more or less become, you know, unbearable, yeah. Um the horrible things might have happened if they decided not to stop the game. So yeah, they probably would have stopped and stopped it even if they didn't rush rush the field. But still, yeah, yeah. And 
I get the feeling that, you know, Swedish football is dead. That's the feeling I get, or got at least, um, this, you know, this last weekend. I mean, we don't have much when it comes to Swedish football. All our team sucks, they're worthless. <laughs> yeah, we got one star player each 10 years, more or less. <clears throat> I mean, we had Henrik Larsson, Fredrik Jungberg. After those, or after him, or with those guys, Slatan came. And yeah, after him, we'll probably get someone like maybe John Gudetti, maybe. Sort of. We get like one good player each 10 years. Yeah! Hopefully, within 10 years, we'll have an A team in Champions League again. Even if they lose all games, they would have been there. Um, but we are too worthless. The only thing we had left was basically the fans. Yeah. And they're doing a lot, but you know, the ones who only want to fight, they're a real problem. And that's horrible. Um, yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Especially, I mean, as I said, the guy who got beaten up uh, turned out that he, he wasn't even a hooligan himself. He has to was a, a normal, you know, father of four children who wanted to watch football, who wanted to watch his favorite team. And then, for some reason, those guys. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of things that you, we still don't know. Um, but basically, the police has arrested one person who. Who basically went to the police office himself when he, he the pic, pi, you know, the pictures started flowing on the internet. Um, when, yeah, when basically the world, yeah, when when media started reporting about his death and everything, uh, it was a huge thing. And then he decided to, you know, surrender himself to the police. So we have at least one guy. But they said there was at least three who was beating him up. So we have two more to arrest, basically. Yeah. Um, so, what to say? I don't know. We're going to meet... A ah, guy told me, actually, this is a Ukrainian team. This doesn't look like Ukraine, though. I mean, it looks more like... Yeah, Ukraine shouldn't be... Ukraine should be over here, sort of. <laughs> and this looks more like, you know, a team from Moldova or something like that. I don't know. It's kind of weird, yeah. Um, but, what to say? I mean... I, you know, it's, it's horrible. It's really horrible. It's, it's yeah. As I said, the the last thing we had is now gone, because the the hooligan stuff had been going on for a while. But usually, you know, they mostly fight with each other, and as long as they do do that and not, you know, cause any trouble on the arenas, then there's not too much you can do. But I mean, lately they've been causing some troubles on the arenas, so. That's not a good thing, no. And also, when they start beating up innocent people, no matter which team it is. I mean, could us could just as well have been a a Helsingborg fan, gotten beaten up uh, by Jew Gordon hooligans. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter in that way. Um. I mean, you you're starting to lose. Yeah, we're starting to lose the last thing we had in Swedish football. There, therefore, it feels dead. At least it feels like and it's in a coma right now. Yeah. Um yeah. It's it's a hard thing to talk about in many ways. And yet it's an easy thing to talk about. Because it's easy to condemn. But you can't really say much else than that. Really. Um and yeah. <laughs> I mean Swedish fans are important for the Swedish group. I'll, I'll link a clip in the description below. Um, that you can click and watch. Show oh, <laughs> how the hell did I miss that? I don't know. Anyway, it shows a um, yeah a game between the two biggest teams in Stockholm, one of the you know biggest uh, derbies in the entire Europe. Um, usually about twenty five to thirty thousand people attend, uh, and that's good for Swedish football. Don't get me wrong, but lately when we got our new national arena. Uh, we have up to 50,000 inhabitants, but that game, uh, basically they, they did a protest against the Swedish Football Association. They're trying to kill the actual uh, supporter, you know, culture, what do you call it? Yeah, the, the culture of the, um, yeah, the guys cheering for their teams. They want everyone to sit down and shut up, like in England, more or less. Yeah. Um, yeah! And they tried to, you know, show how how things would be if they weren't allowed to, to stand up for their team and, and cheer for it. 
so the first 10 minutes of the game everyone in both you know on both sides sat down and shut up uh, so they did the whole process processing together and uh, it's really really yeah, affectful to see I mean you you see how much of a difference it makes for Swedish football because when you watch the players play they're worthless 9 out of 10 is completely worthless um, and then as I said you got 1 out of 10 who's okay but the rest is just shit and then when you don't hear the audience the the, <laughs> um, the what do you call it the guys uh, commentating the game they're like <laughs> this is almost like some kind of a a friendly in, in, in February <laughs> with like 10 people in the audience or something like that because <laughs> everyone just shut up um, and then after 10 minutes they start cheering all together and you hear what different it makes and I'll show you the clip below you can turn on subtitles as well so you hear what the uh, commenters are saying um, oh why can I never score a goal on a corner I don't know but yeah that's how, how you know Swedish fans should be and in many ways are as well but then you have like the black sheep you know yeah! and that black sheep is growing too fat right now so we have to slaughter it yes and <laughs> um, no but there's a, there's a lot of horrible I mean yeah there's a lot of horrible things to say but I mean we should be able to get rid of it Norway doesn't have the problems Denmark doesn't have the problems I mean, when it comes to Denmark though, I heard that FC Copenhagen, their fans are actually going to Sweden to fight. <laughs> so they're allied with the Helsingborg that I talked about earlier. Um, or, you know, they're, they're um, basically they're extremists, the, the hooligans, hooligan sections of both clubs. They're sort of allied. So the Copenhagen guys, they're coming to Sweden to fight instead. Oh, I guess that that's a way you can <laughs> solve the problem. Send all hooligans to Finland or something. Ah, and then they'll get get a feeling for how it is. Yeah, let's send the Hakka Pelita on them. Yes. If you know your history or your Swedish history, then you know what Hakka Pelita is. If you don't, Google Hakka Pelita. Yeah. <laughs> you like it. It's Finnish for, for hack like hell, basically, you know. Hack like if you have a sword and you just yeah, hack people or shop. Basically, yeah, shop is better. Yeah! Shop like hell. Like, chop, chop, chop. Everywhere. Yeah, um, but, I mean, we have to get rid of the problem somehow. And the first way is basically to let people know about it, I guess, both in Sweden and abroad. I mean, in Sweden, they, they already are writing about it. But, yeah, it's so much more than that that needs to be done, basically, without killing the you know the whole supporter culture because you need the the audiences you need the the, um, <coughs> the guys cheering for the teams it's it's like the most important thing we have in Swedish football um, but we do not need the hooligans and first step is to get rid of them inside of the arenas and second step is yeah I mean you can't probably not you can't you know stop them from fighting but at least you can stop them from fighting near civilians and other people who doesn't want to be part of it. Yeah, like, I mean, send them to, to some sort of a, I don't know, some, some, um, old, old, you know, factory that no one's using anymore. You can fight in there. No one gives a shit. The police will be half an hour late and be like, hmm, so someone was bleeding here half an hour ago. Yeah, and then they can beat each other up without caring about the consequences. But if they do it among people, especially when they start beating normal people up, I mean, it's not the first time that they've done things towards civilians, either. That affects the police as well. I mean, the police gets aggressive by it and, and starts thinking that everyone. Or no, I don't want to do a post match interview. Fuck you. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's it's horrible in many ways. Uh, let's actually go horse racing yeah so I mean yeah show your support somehow I don't know maybe you can't show your support in any way but yeah it should you should care especially if you're from a country who doesn't have as much support or violence then you should be really really careful as well if you're from somewhere like you know Turkey Greece countries in which I've heard that there are a lot of troubles or 
you know, like Croatia or, or Serbia or something like that. Um, you should be aware as well, you can have it better. Don't let the dark side win. Basically, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, just hit them in the nuts. <laughs> no, but seriously, yeah, don't, don't give up. You know, stay in there. Yeah, basically, um, it's horrible things, but you you have to stand up for what you think is right, and and that's what we need to do now without killing the actual uh, supporter culture. It's a hard thing to do, but yeah. Oh. Looks like Spaghetti Forgetti actually won't win this race. What the fuck? Come on! Oh shit, he's done with. He or she is old. It's time to become a breeding horse. Yes! <laughs> uh, no, but yeah. That's, that's horrible things. We can talk about smart things. It's April 1st today. When you see this video, it should be. Do you know where April 1st come from? It's from an old um, celebration, you know, back in the days, old days, when they moved over from an old um, calendar to the Gregorian calendar or something like that. In the old calendar they would ce celebrate New Year's Eve on the actual, what do you call it, on the um, um, yeah, on, on 1st of April, but then they decided, no, it should be 1st of January instead. And then some people refused to actually, um, yeah, they refused, refused to start celebrating in, in the 1st of, of January, so they continued celebrating it in the 1st of April instead, and then the rest of the people made fun out of them, because they celebrated on, on the wrong day, so they called them fools and all that, and from that, the whole um, 1st of, yeah, 1st of April, April's Fool's Things has originated, I guess, or sprang out from, that's kind of fun actually. Um, I don't ask for this too often. Yes, let's let's get this watch sponsorship contract. Yes, hopefully it's no April Fools. Hooray! It wasn't great. Well, I know at least. Yeah. Um. But what did I want to say? Um. Yeah, I don't ask for this too often. I don't ask for comments and that because no one comments anyway. But today I'm actually going to do it. It's April first. Have you been fooled in any way so far? Have someone managed to trick you or you know what what have happened in your life today April 1st um, make sure to tell me about it because I want to know it's actually kind of a, a funny thing to, to share I have not yet been tricked it's because it's 9 a.m. in the morning I had a cup of coffee yeah! um, I said goodbye to my brother who went home to his hometown and I've been recording this episode I haven't actually even read the newspaper so I have not yet been fooled in any way, um, so make sure to, to to tell me if you have been fooled in any way, I would like to know. Share your experiences, yes, do it, or I'll kill you all, kill you all, no I guess not, <laughs> April Fools, no, that wasn't too fun, um, I have not included any April Fools in this episode actually. I have not even thought about it um, because I had some serious things to talk about, and therefore it's kind of silly to to include that those things. I must say, indeed, it is. Yes. Oh, we are actually in the lead. Maybe I can April Fool's this goalkeeper. It looks like it. <laughs> what? Oh, I got the ball. God damn it! What the hell? What's wrong with the world today? No, 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 no. Yeah, if you watch. If you watch Flight of the Concourse, then you might recognize that line, especially na 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 Yeah! Um, but yeah, um, make sure to tell me if you've been fooled anyway. Maybe now at least you know where the whole expression came from. Yeah! Which is kind of fun. Um, so, yeah. I mean, it's all about history, dude. It's the same with, with um, you know, Christmas. Yeah. You had the Yule. Yeah, the, the kind of a, a north, you know, Viking celebration in which the uh, Christmas dudes incorporated into their own celebration. Hooray! <laughs> yes. Uh, no, but yeah, if you have been tricked in a way, would would be actually really fun to 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 know. Or maybe you will all be like, no one fools me. <laughs> yes. Um. If that happens, if no one fools you, awesome. Tell me about it. 
can about or maybe you can tell them about how you fool other people because if you never get fooled you can at least fool other people yes you can always do that I remember one of the the worst things ever um, one of the top you know Swedish hockey teams they decided on April 1st to release like 13 or 14 players in their team I mean you know to, to um, actually more or less break their contracts they decided to do that on April 1st so media saw the reporting about it and everyone was like <laughs> that's a silly April 1st fool yes. <laughs> ah, you won't fool me with that one but then it turned out that it was actually a <laughs> real decision that they made yeah! on April 1st to just ah, let's not sign new contracts let's let's you know break all the contracts with with like 14 15 players or something like that on April 1st that sounds like a good idea yes and <laughs> so it turned out that they actually did that in the end which was kind of weird and um, but it happened yeah so that's kind of fun I guess and odd in a way uh, but yeah, uh, what what else is happening in April Fools? I don't know. I heard a very classical example um, from oof, old British media, in which they were talking about spaghetti trees in Switzerland. People who didn't know where, where spaghetti came from, um, so they said that they had spaghetti farms in Switzerland, in which they you know went around and collected all the spaghettis and sent over to <laughs> to England. Um, so, yeah, people started calling to, to kind of, um, what what it, plant stores and traveling, traveling companies and all that, and were like, hey, wh wh where can I get one of those spaghetti trees? I would want that in my backyard. Um, silly people, basically, yes. Um, I don't know if you can Google it, maybe you can Google, you know, April food spaghetti tree, sort of, maybe, then you should find, find the story. It's kind of fun, actually. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I heard one of the most classical jokes in Sweden was back in the old days when we only had black and white TV. Um, everyone, oof, you know, there was this hype that, oh, you, you should be able to get colored TV somehow. And then a, some sort of a, you know, I don't know if it was some sort of a scientist or a normal, normal TV personality who said that, yeah, you can basically get color TV if you if you buy a nylon sock or something like you know stockings, you know the the whole what, the thing that women wear on their legs, you know leggings maybe call it. Yeah, they could basically buy nylon leggings and, and you know put it over the TV and then you'll get color TV. So people actually started doing that. And yeah, oh, people are so fucking silly. Yes. What a Fools, yeah, they were not fools, all of them. I guess that's why we call it April Fools, basically. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if there's someone that you should fool on April 1st, it's the old people, because they, they don't think about that stuff. It's just another day. Yes. <laughs> I mean, imagine if there would be like a horrible plane crash on January 1st, or... Yeah, I meant April 1st, and everyone be, would be like, nah, stop kidding, stop, come on. And then it'll be like, no, actually, <laughs> 200 people are lost, oh. And everyone would be like, nah, shut up, we already have a plane crash on our hands, shut up. Yeah, and the chance is actually 1 in 365, if a plane is going to crash once a year, and the chance is 1 in 365 that actually crashes on April 1st, so that's kind of odd, I guess. Yeah, we won at least. That's good. Sorry for the little bit of a horrible ending. Joking about plane crashes is not good. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Hopefully I'll see you all around the, the next time. Leave a like if you want to. Tell me about your April Fool's experiences, because that would be actually be fun to know. Yeah, hopefully I'll see you all, as I said, the next time, and goodbye.